What is up guys, it's the Sound Alchemist, and today I'm back to talk about Warhammer 40k. More specifically, I'm going into the comment section of the video titled, The Emperor of Mankind, Humanity's Hope or Bringer of Ruin. So in that video, I talked about basically the four phases of the Emperor and how he has either helped humanity or how he has helped cause their demise. So I talked about when he was hiding and kind of leading humanity from the shadows, him during the Great Crusade, when he was interred on the Golden Throne, and a few theories as to what may happen after the throne is no longer functioning. Whether it's reincarnation or creating himself into a god. So if you guys want to check out that video, um, go ahead and check out the link down below. But I found a comment here that I wanted to talk about because it's really, really well thought out. This comment is by Brian, and this is what he says. So I don't see the Emperor as the bringer of hope or despair. I see him as a force for structure and stability for mankind. For me, the thing that ultimately brought down the Emperor was his humanity. The love and leniency he had for his sons was his weakness and his biases and favoritism over them was the mechanism to his undoing. That is 100% <laughs> correct. Um, he continues on by saying, Had he smited down Horus the instant he saw him and not let his paternal instincts cloud his better judgment, had he not tried to reason with him, he could have ended the conflict quickly and turned the defense into an offense, and he would have been able to capture back some of his now fleeing resources. To even further illustrate that his humanity was his downfall, and prior to Horus even turning to chaos, him letting his anger and frustration get the better of him, leading him towards enacting his wrath against the word bearers. That went beyond just a formal disciplinary reprimand. He had to humiliate them in such a great fashion to almost sort of petty degree. Not only that, but he was also directing his wrath at the people who viewed him in the highest regard. And he was doing so because of their praise and worship. It just seemed like overkill when he could have went about it in a great number of ways, such as enacting some kind of sanctions on any worshipping, especially of himself. Or maybe the changing the doctrine of the word bearers himself and giving them new worlds where they were supposed to be teaching instead of praising. But no, he went about it in the worst way possible. He let those petty human emotions become obstacles in his decision making and diverting from better choices that his regime could have benefited more from. Which of course then set the events of the heresy into motion. For as all-powerful and godlike of a being that the Emperor seems to be, he sure is flawed as the rest of us. Words of a soon-to-be heretic. So yeah, many, many points that are 100% correct. The whole thing with the word bearers, like when he found out that the word bearers were basically going from world to world and forcing their religion of the Imperial Truth on the humans there, the Emperor did not want to be praised. The Emperor did not want to have religion be a huge motivator for humanity. And that's exactly what Lorgar and his Marines were doing. So, he, like, like you said, he could have done this in a many different kinds of ways. But no, he burnt down and utterly decimated Lorgar's favorite world and favorite city. So... It, it was overkill, in my opinion. Um, the whole thing with Horus, yeah, he could have easily ended that conflict. Dorn and Sanguinius didn't have to be put in, you know, in danger. Sanguinius's death wouldn't have been a sacrifice that led to the Emperor winning. But when you, you're 100% correct, like the Emperor is flawed by his humanity. And even though it seems that the Emperor is doing everything in his power to make humanity come out on top, at the end of the day, humans are flawed. We let emotion dictate us instead of reason. And because of that, the choices we choose come with some pretty devastating consequences. 
And we see this time and time again with the Emperor. He's doing everything for the better of humanity, but he can't do it logically. He's not a machine. He, he doesn't, he, he feels love, he feels regret. And because of that, that is why the Imperium is in the position that they are in now. A slow decay with horrors and chaos all around them. But there is hope. The Emperor still lives. And because of that, humanity's light is dimming, but it has not gone out yet. This next comment is by Antoine Ewing, and he says, The Big E should have been honest and told them everything. It's as simple as, Ah, sons, I'm working on a replica from the old times TV show that I love to watch called Stargate. Also, Magnus, stop messing with the warp or you'll go blind. And Horus, knock off that slappy-ass playtime with Erebus. Conrad, take your damn medicine like I told you to. Percherabo, build me something shiny, perhaps maybe a golden throne, wink wink. And Lorgar, stop simping and sending super chats to those chaos gods. Our money doesn't grow on trees. And Gran, the Emperor pointing his finger, smash. And tell Fulgrim to down that damned mirror. Yes, we get it. You're pretty. The Big E ponders for a moment. Has anyone seen Alpharius and Omegon? Beautiful. <laughs> I would love to see this animated. Um, just the hilarity, the truth, the sarcasm, it's all perfect. Like, uh, I love it. And Antoine, I did read this, so... <laughs> Uh, you're welcome. It wasn't on the next greater wall, but it was here. So hopefully your ears have found these noises to be replicated. That's a weird way of saying it. And the last one that I want to talk about is a comment by Freeman Reigns. He says, The Emperor tried so hard to unite humanity under his rule through sheer force, but he was always doomed to fail. Unironically, it was religion that truly united humanity in the end, allowing it to survive. I see this as a kind of reflection on human nature. Yeah, ever since humans started thinking and having time to ponder, uh, basically when the requirements of survivability have been met, like you have food, you have shelter, um, outside stresses aren't you know forcing you to fight or f flight, then that's when humanity starts to think and every culture anywhere in the world those thoughts always led to a higher being a god of sorts a religion to be created and since the dawn of time pretty much humanity has always felt that there's been a higher power and a driving force in as to why they are here then and now religion has been pushing humans towards achieving marvelous things but at the same time you could also say that the scientific revolution was also pushing humans towards that. Um, so science and religion have been two driving factors for humanity, and that is continued to be seen in the 40k millennium. Uh, the 41st millennium, for that matter. Uh, humanity has been prospering because of their belief in the emperor, but as well as the golden age of humanity, uh, when they were just creating artificial intelligence, and there is no need for war or strife. Everything they wanted, the humans had at their beck and call. And that is what led to their downfall. Not religion, but their encumbrance being halted. Humans, I feel, always need some type of conflict or something to keep them occupied. When humanity has nothing to be occupied with, they create problems themselves. And they you oftentimes use religion or some type of persecution as a means to achieve those ends and that is what the emperor kind of did for himself not necessarily creating conflict out of nothing but the whole xenophobia um i mean i guess he had points because like the orcs the tyranids there are xenos out there that are not friendly so the emperor did have reason to say hey you know there are xenos out there that want to burn kill, maim, but look on the other side, you have some Xenos that are just want to be left alone or work together. So because of that, I feel that 
the you are 100 percent right in that humanity trying to the emperor trying to force religion away for humanity it, it couldn't happen because it is such an integral part in the way humans are i guess made built whatever you want to call it they always try to see some greater force out there and the emperor was should have been that greater force and it, you can see with like lorgar pushing the imperial creed uh the imperial truth no matter what like the emperor was going to be praised and i think that praise is what's keeping humanity afloat but we'll see what that leads whether it's the emperor achieving achieving apotheosis and attaining godhood we'll just have to wait and see where gw takes it but uh the theory of the emperor becoming the god emperor it's gotta happen there are too many humans believing that the emperor is a god to not make those belief manifest into reality but anyway this is the end of this video thank you for watching thank you for leaving those comments a lot of intriguing knowledgeable points that you guys have made and hopefully this has given you a little bit more insight into the machinations of the man we call the emperor of mankind perhaps he was neither the hope of humanity nor the bringer of ruin he's just doing the best that he can with what he's been given and if always guys if you like what we do here hit that like button subscribe comment down below your thoughts and if you want to help us just a little bit more our patreon is always there a simple dollar will help us bring you more 40k videos each and every day. Thank you for watching, and as always, I've been the Sound Alchemist, part of One Mind Syndicate, and I'm signing out.